My name is Craig Turvitt, and I was born in a tiny mining town in South Africa called Vidbank. I'm Peter Kokram, and I was born in Faisabad, Trinidad. My name is Ahmed Meherali, and I was born in uh, Pakistan, Karachi. I'm Valerie, and I was born in Ukraine. My name is Anthony, I was born in Toronto, however I moved back to Trinidad when I was just months old, less than six months, so even though for technical purposes I'm not an immigrant, for life purposes I am. Well, my name is uh, Christophe Labat, and I was born in France. My name is Susanna, and I was born in Port of Spain, Trinidad. I'm Marius, and I was born in Romania. My name is Janina, and I am from Lima, Peru. I arrived in March 2003. September 2005. 1994. I returned to Canada Christmas of 2001. April 2009. 2007? 1995. May 1973. I came to Canada in April of 2007. London, UK. Montpellier, which is in the south of France. I came to Canada directly from Romania. I came from Ukraine. Came from South Africa. Um, I was living in Johannesburg at the time. From Trinidad. <laughs> Lima, Peru. I came to Canada from Barbados, actually. We had moved from Trinidad to Barbados, so I went to school there for four and a half years, and then we moved here. I was only 11 at the time, and I, uh, yeah, so I came with my mother, my father, my brother, and my sister. My wife, uh, Krista, and my son, uh, Hassan. I came to Canada by myself. Um, and I came back with my mother. I came with my mom and my dad. My mom, my dad, and my little brother. I came here by myself. I came with my mom and my stepdad. By myself. I, I was um, sponsored by my brother, so I came as a landed immigrant. A brother and a sister came in subsequent years. My parents, um, they were uh, visiting uh, for a few months. My sister and my nephews, and they love it. I, I just had my grandparents visit. No, we were the last to come. I had cousins here, and grandparents already here. So my mother and myself were the last to come. My sister actually walked into my footsteps. She came to Vancouver in October of 2013. Uh, my grandmother came to Canada about five or six years afterwards. I had my cousin coming for visiting and my grandma and she received her permanent residence shortly after. Some extended family members have moved to Canada. We had some family here already as well. I came to Canada to make my dream come true. Uh, my dream of becoming a pilot. Uh, for some reason it didn't work in Europe. And I chose Canada specifically because uh, it was the country that would give me the most chance to make my dream come true. And so far, it's been successful. I have become an airline pilot. I've been in aviation for eight years. I've seen the Arctic, I've seen Vancouver Island, I've seen Western Canada, Eastern Canada. So it's been just a great ride. I came to Canada for the pursuit of a better quality of life, a better education, and a better way of life for my family. I came to Canada, reason being, uh, my wife had no family down in the UK, and she also told me that uh, Canada is a good place to raise family. At 13 years old, I was kind of out of my control. Um, so I came back, my mom wanted me to, I guess, have that Canadian experience. The situation in South Africa was possibly a little unstable. My parents had lived in uh, Rhodesia, which then became Zimbabwe, and they were a little concerned that something similar might be happening in South Africa. So from a safety perspective, they felt that it was, um, if they could make a move, that they would. So um, they had kind of gone through that once in uh, Zimbabwe and they didn't really want to go through it again. So we managed to get accepted to Canada. To better my life, for opportunities for education and to, uh, for a better quality of life. My father worked for the UN and he was being posted in East Africa. He wanted us to be somewhere where we could fly a little more direct than being in the Caribbean. So they had the choice of US or Canada to base our family. He chose Canada because he had been to school in both countries and he preferred the lifestyle in Canada here. So we moved to Toronto at that time. I came to Canada because my stepdad, he's Canadian, my mom got married in Ukraine and because he's an engineer 
um, it was harder for him to find a job there uh, back in Russia, back in Ukraine, so we moved here. I came to Canada because, uh, well, my aunt, she lives, um, she lives here for uh, over 40 years and she uh, sponsored me and she wanted me to uh, uh, first to visit if I like the cold or not <laughs> and then I decided to stay. We have ties to uh, the UK and so we could have gone there but my mom had spent a lot of time there and found it cramped and that kind of thing and uh, we had actually made a big trip um, sort of to Canada and the US when I was only around two and my parents experience in Canada was one that really made them want to try and come here if they could. My family chose Canada because my dad's sister was already here um, beforehand and uh, they would help us to adapt more quickly to the Canadian lifestyle. I had a brother and a sister living in Edmonton so they had been living here for a few years so uh, it seemed like a logical place to come and Canada had all the um, good things going for it, you know, versus England or the US, right? Seemed to be a much uh, friendlier and uh, place with a lot of opportunities. I arrived when I was nine. Um, it was, as a kid, it was very difficult since I didn't know much English. I knew about hello, bye, I need to go to the bathroom, and that's about it. And it was hard to make friends when you don't know English. Yeah, I came at the end of the summer. I remember it being extremely cold. <laughs> um, I remember people not understanding when I said numbers because my accent was even thicker. So, yeah, people couldn't understand. Like, math was hard. <laughs> Already harder than it usually is. Um, and then I also remember being in my classroom and seeing the first snowfall. And I just left my desk and ran to the window. And my teacher at the time was Miss Mills. And she realized what was happening. And that was the first time I was seeing snow. So she stopped the whole class and, like, got us to put on our snowsuits and go outside and play in the snow. So that was, that was one of my first memories in Canada. My arrival in Canada. Uh, when I came, uh, I used to work at the uh, Heathrow Airport, uh, London. Uh, and when I came, it was a total shocker for me because I went straight from the airport to a small town in uh, Red Bay, Labrador, where the, uh, the population on paper was 180. But there were only 80 people when I did a head count myself. <laughs> when I first came to Canada, actually, I chose Winnipeg out of all places. <laughs> so I know it's that. <laughs> yeah, it may be a, a little surprising, but I did that on purpose. I didn't want to go to Montreal. I wanted to make sure that I'd be able uh, to speak English. And uh, I wanted to choose a province that would give me the best chances to land the job afterwards. And Manitoba seemed to be the best one. We landed in the Toronto airport um, and actually ended up taking the, the Cross Canada train all the way to Vancouver where we would live. Um, I don't really remember landing in Toronto specifically or anything like that, but I remember, um, you know, it was actually the first time I'd seen bagels for the first time and I thought they were donuts and I was very disappointed. For me it was very shocking because I was a teenager and I couldn't speak English and I couldn't make friends because this was like the hardest part for me to communicate with people. And it was cold. My first year here, it was snowy in June, which, you know, it was pretty stressful. Even though I've been here in those 13 years, I've been here many times in between because I said I had cousins and grandparents and stuff here. Um, it was still strange because I know now it wasn't just for a few weeks visit or whatever so and even that day when I was coming I came by myself my mom didn't come until about three weeks after so flying by myself coming in strange started school new like that, that January right after Christmas um, so those things were like big adjustments culture wise and having to make new friends um, people not understanding me because my accent was very thick when I just came it was by plane, it was by Air Canada, through Toronto. And I was greeted 
uh, by friends and relatives in Edmonton? Um, it was cold <laughs> um, and it was uh, by March, March 2007 and I was a little bit concerned about how was everything uh, uh, people but I found it since then like people are so nice uh, in everywhere and I, I started to get uh, uh, to learn everything. From a legal perspective there weren't any uh, challenges really because I came as a permanent resident and you had to fulfill the obligations of the time in the country I guess the biggest challenge was going through the workbooks and learning all the facts to pass the uh, test. The actual path for me was not uh, tremendously difficult. Um, I was in uh, elementary school and then high school for a bit. I didn't even have to take the uh, the test, even though I probably would have, you know, hadn't gone to school here for quite a bit, would have been fine at it. Um, so for me. Um, you know, I was fairly young, so I didn't really experience any of the difficulties of getting um, citizenship itself. I found it very difficult to fit in. Um, having taken in two cultures, I felt like um, s some of my some of my qualities don't always match with the Canadian qualities. But I feel like I have qualities from both cultures and. Um, it makes it a bit more difficult to feel like you fit in. To be honest, it was uh, very nice and simple. I had uh, all the papers, uh, uh, like, you know, all the formalities to be filled in, and I filled in normally, and there was no glitch, no hitch, uh, and it was really simple. It, it was done, like, what, within, uh, I'll say, three years? I have faced many challenges. Um, I would say that the biggest challenge that I faced was to obtain my, um, my permanent residency. It was a bit of a battle because it was not a straightforward process. Um, but uh, you know what, I was relentless. I never let go. And uh, after about a uh, year and a half of um, back and forth in the paperwork, I managed to uh, become a permanent resident. I think challenges in terms of adjustment. At the time, the actual Canadian citizenship process, as a child, I didn't have to do anything that I can recall. Um, but I do remember trying to memorize the Canadian national anthem. <laughs> it took a long time because I would also sing it to the tune of the Trinidad national anthem, which is totally different. And then just when I thought I had memorized the Canadian national anthem, they switched it up and we had to learn like part in English and part in French, which I'd never spoken. So yeah, I remember that being like my hurdle <laughs> to become Canadian was memorizing the anthem. Yes, at first I, uh... My challenge was language. I studied a little bit of English back home, but um, then I got the chance to practice every day because I started working and then after that studying. Um, that was my first challenge, I think. And then second, adapt to the weather. <laughs> You know, the journey started, I, I lived actually in a few different places in Canada when I first came I lived in Edmonton, lived in a place called Pine Point, Northwest Territories that doesn't exist anymore, then back to Edmonton. But the best part of the journey, I would say, was in uh, the 30 odd years that I lived in Fort McMurray, because it was a place that, um, it was a melting pot, people from all over the world, people were reaching out, were accepting, and also um, a place of opportunities for making life better. And also that's where my kids were born and, and grew up. So um, most of my adult life was in uh, Fort Murray. So that was kind of the best part of the journey for me, is uh, Fort Murray itself. I, I remember doing the ceremony and that kind of thing and uh, really enjoying that and feeling like a full Canadian at that point. I think what I enjoy the most is having like this blended identity of being Trinidadian and Canadian. There are parts of me that are very Trini, but there are parts of me that are very Canadian and I'm reminded of those when I travel and when I'm elsewhere and I think having that blended identity has been such a benefit for me as a person. So. I like the diver diversity 
diversity <laughs> that you know you get to meet people uh, from other like countries, different places, from all around Canada, all around the world, and like you know you get to see a little bit of everything. Like even though you guys like we're all in the same place, but you have a lot to learn from others. Uh, I made some good friends. Uh, I never wanted to, uh, like, you know, uh, be negative uh, of a total different uh, place. The people. <laughs> Canadian people are really uh, welcoming, They're really uh, laid back, and at the same time, they're hard worker. So they totally uh, fit uh, the people that I like hanging out with. I enjoy uh, being surrounded with so many people from different corners of the world and you get to hear their own unique story. To learn uh, every, every culture, like all the uh, people that I've met here, that I've met in the past, uh, the friends that I have now, um, the Canadian culture, um, and it's, it's something that I, I never, I never thought, I'd, I never expected to uh, be this, uh, um, if, if fun as well. And I'm, I'm glad that I came here and I made the choice to stay. What I enjoy the most about Canada is the diversity, uh, whether it comes uh, to people or to the scenery. I mean, if you look at the beauty that we have in Canada, we've got the Canadian Arctic. We've got uh, this beautiful west coast, we've got the magnificent east coast. Uh, I love St. John's, I love Vancouver. I have had the pleasure in my career to uh, fly over the Arctic. So yeah, Canada is, is extremely diverse, it's very exciting. Uh, to be honest, I can say uh, I enjoy uh, don't at the same time is the cold weather, snow. <laughs> uh, it's very good uh, if you know how to drive in snow. Yes, that's the, that's the best thing about Canada. <laughs> Beef. It tastes so good here. Um, what else do I enjoy about Canada? Opportunities. I think the idea that if you work hard and you take advantage of the opportunities that come your way, anything really is possible. And I think I also enjoy um, Canada is such a large country compared to where I came from. It's a small island of a million people. So having this huge country that you're a part of that has all these different um, cuisines and terrains and accents and own subcultures within it. I think that's really cool. A lot. Um, <laughs> I enjoy, I guess, the freedom to do literally anything you want to do. Um, I enjoyed all the opportunities that it provides. Scholarly, whatever, whatever it is you're looking at, it's a, it is available to you. Um, what else can I say? I especially well, I guess I was blessed and I moved to a city like Toronto where that is very diverse, so I like the diversity. That made me reflected throughout all of Canada in general, but living there for most of my Canadian experience thus far, it's, um, it's definitely helped in terms of opening my eyes as to what Canada can be or is. It's a freezing day outside right now, so it's not the weather right now. Um, but honestly, I think it's, it's kind of the freedom in the wilderness out there. Um, you know, I've had a, I've been beneficial and been able to travel quite a bit around the country and just the expanse of Canada and the wilderness out there and the, uh, you know, um, yeah, just the natural beauty of it is, is phenomenal. The changes in the weather, but mostly summertime, and springtime, but really, um, you know, with the things happening south of the border, um, having the friendliness, having the openness, having uh, opportunities for ourselves as minorities and for immigrants um, is quite comforting to know that it still exists. It was here, you know, when I arrived in the early 70s and it's still there today. Also, opportunity to share our culture with other people. And I'll go back to my days in Fort Murray when um, we were heavily involved with a lot of multicultural associations and we had a Caribbean association. I had a steel band. And, you know, part of that band, we had people from all over Canada, all over the world,
playing in that band. We had people, you know, from Ireland. We had people from Newfoundland, from Nova Scotia, Saskatchewan. So it brought people together. Again, I think music and sports um, bring people together. And we have those opportunities here in Canada. I guess the people and the opportunity and how safe it is. That was one of the reasons why I decided to stay because uh, I feel safe in this country. Family. I miss my family and food. Foods. Uh, authentic food. The food? The food? The food. The food, like I said, the being able to relax easier, you don't have to escape, your environment is an escape. So those things I believe just make, those are the main things I miss. I said more laid back nature and fun going uh, part of life, not the rat race that is North America. The warm weather. It's the warm weather. The weather. The weather. I miss daily temperature of 33 degrees Celsius. Um, I think the thing I miss the most is being close to the beach. Just being able to drive off to the beach. But the lakes have been okay. Well, initially I missed, um, you know, family and friends. Um, more long term, I miss the beaches. <laughs> the food, I, um, I, I like, I enjoy. But again, at the same time, I get the, the chance to try everything from different cultures, uh, so it's okay. <laughs> My name is Susanna, and I'm proud to be Canadian. My name is Craig Turvet, and I'm proud to be Canadian. My name is Matthews, and I'm proud to Canadian. I'm proud to be Canadian. My name is Christophe Labatt, and I'm proud to be Canadian. My name is Valerie, and I'm proud to be Canadian. My name is Anthony and I'm proud to be Canadian. My name is Janina and I'm very proud to be Canadian. My name is Peter Kokram and I'm really proud to be.